Somerville. My name's Ed Halloran. Welcome to the Somerville Labor Show. Um, you know, these shows just get better and better for me. I enjoy doing them, as you know. And um, we have a special guest in the studio here today. And um, I also want to welcome you guys to watch, you know, anything on YouTube that we produce um, as well as well the Somerville Media Center here because what we do is, I think it's different. I think it's rare. You're, not, you're, you're getting to have the ability to actually hear things uh, that you haven't heard that's ongoing in the city when it comes to labor. And we all know that labor affects all of us in so many different ways because we spend most of our time there. The majority of our lives are circled around labor. And that's one of the reasons why I decided to do this show. Um, so anyway, I want to uh, introduce uh, Mary Cassessa, who's here today. And this is, for me, it's a thrill because I've, I just had the ability to, to meet you um, a couple of years ago. I know your sister really well, Anne, who's a, a member of the Summer Missile Employees Association. Um, and she's just great and just a great union member. And I know you have a strong, strong ties to your family, have strong ties to unions as well. Um, but before I totally bring you into the conversation, I want to um, just say a little something about your bio. It's small, but it's extensive in my opinion. Uh, Mary Cassesso Bio is a, she's a former uh, president of the CHA Foundation and Chief Community Officer of the Cambridge Health Alliance. And that's a big job. Uh, <laughs> was a big job. Mary Cassesso has held a range of jobs throughout her impressive career, uh, but they share common threads, healthcare, affordable housing, and education, all work done in public interest. And that was, believe it or not, that came, that quote didn't come from me. That came from this magazine right here. It looks really good on the screen, by the way. I'm looking at it right now. This is, this is great. What I love about this is there was 40 people in the city of Sumrall, right? And it was a 2016 Scout Magazine article titled, It Takes a Village, V-I-L-E, v -I -L -E, uh, age village, getting to know 40 local leaders who are shaping Sumrall's future by Emily Cassell, Eliza Rosenberry and Catherine Rugg. And I had to want to mention their names because I think it was really important. And you were in this magazine. You were too. I was? Yes. <laughs> I don't even know how I got in it. I mean, but it was really, it was a high honor for me. Um, it's just community involvement, you know? So look, it's, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Um, and like I said, I, I got the, the ability to meet you. And by the way, Mary Cassesso ran for mayor two years ago, so I might as well stop that right okay. off, right? Yes. And it's a, that's, that is a daunting task in itself. Um, and I had the ability to speak to you and understand, about you, understand a little bit about you, not as much as I would have liked to have at that particular point in time, but um, it led me to have a conversation with you, and you graciously accepted to come on the show, which you, I don't, you probably don't do these at all, and, you know, but it's nice to have you here. Thank you. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about the first thing I want to start with, because in your life, um, community activism is like big, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm, I, my, I myself get pulled into it, so many of us do. Um, and, you know, one thing I took away and I learned about you, uh, mostly important, um, was that you've, your family's always been involved in, in, you know, in, in the community, mm -hmm. uh, no matter what happens or what's going on in, in, in the city of Sumrall. And so is that how it started for you? Yes, Ed. Um, you know, my entire extended family um, lived in Somerville. There wasn't a street in the nunnery grounds that didn't have a relative. Mm -hmm. So we were well watched over. But the family was very active. East Somerville was the poorest neighborhood and remains the only, I don't know if it's even fair to say the affordable neighborhood any longer in mm -hmm. Somerville. Mm -hmm. We'll talk a little bit more about East Somerville later, I'm sure, um, and some of the changes. Mm -hmm. But yes, growing up, um, my grandmother was the matriarch of the family. She had seven kids. Most of them lived in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And we were brought up to really care about your neighbors and your community. And if you didn't, bad things would happen. Mm -hmm. So it was just really natural that whether it was um, extended family. And I was a kid, so I don't get credit for what my relatives taught me, but I continued. Um, mm -hmm whether it was the formation of the Somerville Health Center, which later became part of Cambridge Health Alliance, mm -hmm. that was started by not only several family members. I was a teenager, but I went along, I was a volunteer there, and other neighbors, because there was no health care in East Somerville, which was, as I said, one of the uh, poor sections of the city of Somerville. 
before I, I wore my United Farm Workers <laughs> shirt because we also I'm glad would you wore that. in front of Star Markets, boycotted gala wine, um, grapes, and iceberg lettuce because the working condition of mm -hmm. the farm workers w was just absolutely awful. Oh, and really? so my entire family was involved and remain involved in um, the kind of like, like a farm, they did like a farm aid thing out of, out of that too, I think. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. So in, in, in conditions for migrant workers continue to be an issue. And then last and probably most relevant and important was um, how well we organized against the elevated I-93 structure. Uh, yeah. We didn't win. The decision was made without even neighborhood mm -hmm. input. Mm -hmm. um, and as a result, I will say there's a... Um, there's an event tomorrow night at the Mystic Housing Development uh, Development on Environmental Justice. But the number of people, included in my own family, that had serious health issues mm. as a result of the small dust particles and all the work that Doug Brugge has written about in many people. I had Doug. I had this. Doug on the show. Yes. I had Doug on the show with his daughter. They were wonderful. Um, she actually. Um, there's, she has a, like a hip hop rap thing yeah, that she did, a, that was very cool. Um, yeah, Doug was very good, very good guest. Yeah. Talk about particles in the air. Yeah. I had the book. We had him on the show. Yeah. That that was a good take too. Yeah. Absolutely, I, I agree with him on that one. So we were just taught that you had to get involved, you had to advocate, you had to fight if you wanted a community that was healthy, that was inclusive, that was caring mm -hmm. for neighbors, kind and respectful to one another. So yeah. that was. And that, so, so then it all evolves from there, yes. obviously. Yes. Um, you went from boycotting grapes, mm -hmm. right, and, le yes. and lettuce, uh, and then you had the I-93. Now, <clears throat> there was a section that was taken out of there. There were houses, people actually lost oh their gosh. homes. It, when I think about affordable housing um, and the fact <clears throat> that two and three family houses were <clears throat> starter houses for families, um, we lost in the nunnery grounds seven houses on each side of the street and uh, about six streets, um, maybe even more. And that doesn't include what um, the mystic section mm. lost. So we lost a lot of what was affordable housing in our neighborhoods that wasn't ever replaced. Yeah, and people, people were in a panic over that. Uh, I know that, I remember as growing up as, as a young boy, what was going on with all of that. <clears throat> um, one thing I wanna talk about, and we'll go to affordable housing right now too, we might as well because it's, it's perfect uh, for what we're talking about. Um, safety net services. You've said that before to me when we had a conversation. I don't hear it that often, so I'm trying to, if maybe you can educate the audience on what, yeah. what that term is and what it yeah. means to you. Well, in my mind, it's, it reflects your well-being overall. Do you have housing? <clears throat> Do you have food on the table? Do you have a good job? Is there educational and training opportunities? Mm. Um, so it's your basic service needs that I truly believe is the business of government. And of, of course, healthcare, because I talked about the formation of the Somerville Health Center, mm -hmm. because we did not have a place for people to go for primary care needs and other needs. So it's those basic services that if people don't have them, they can't be healthy. So that's that's that sums that up. The safety net makes you know, and and even now, like after COVID, there's still probably a lot of it going on out there. Um, incredibly important to have that uh, in, in the city. Um, so I'm glad. Now, um, in the back in the 70s and 80s, now you worked for the Dukakis administration, right? After I worked for Gene Boone, I have After to say, my <laughs> boss, he was actually in that scout as one of the Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, Gene, he's people. a great, yeah. he's a great guy. <laughs> he is. I always yeah. wanted to have him on, you know, yeah. I mean, he's such a good he'll guy. He'll do it. I know he'll do it. Yeah. I know he's wonderful. I mean, I bump into him in a lot of places, yeah. not recently since COVID, but I absolutely do. So I want to, was it the 70s, late 70s, early 80s, um, and you got involved with the Dukakis? How did that happen? Well, I first worked for Gene Broom, and I, you know, we had been active in city politics for some time. In fact, many members in my family were um, um, supporters of 
um, rent stabilization back then and others. So, mm -hmm. so, you know, what goes around comes around. And so some of these issues, although I think we've lost ground in the area of affordable housing, and I think now we have some opportunity to make it up a little. But I worked for Gene Brune on his campaign, and he offered me a position in human services. I stayed there for a year. And I worked really hard. I did the first uh, information referral directory of all social services in the city of mm. Somerville so that people could figure out and navigate the services they needed. I thought that was an important project. Absolutely. Of course, now it would all be online, but it was actually... Well, a, that was before we had, yeah, you know... Yeah, that was before, yeah. yeah we had computers, yeah. we had the internet, yeah. and 5G, yeah. right? Then Jean asked me to go down to the Council on Aging. There had been some problems. And at the time, the city of Somerville operated a health center, the 60-plus health center. And uh, Hazel Hughes, who um, um, has an award at SCC, um, worked with me at the um, Council on Aging. Mm -hmm. And we really expanded the Council on Aging. I worked hand-in-hand -hand with um, Somerville Cambridge Elder Services, worked with the Transportation Services, um, and um, did a great job. It was one of the first picnics remember the elder picnics oh, yeah. that used to have yeah, in their they still, they, yes you know they still have them so yep, i was only there about a year and gene had a problem um he wanted to build um, um a new high school or at least part of the high school mm -hmm. and in order to do that you have to sell municipal bonds oh, yeah. and you can only sell municipal bonds um, and get rated for how strong your city is financially mm -hmm. if you're books are up to date. Right. Well, Somerville's books were three years behind. They were all done manually. Oh, boy. And so he asked me would I, um, would I serve as the city auditor. Um, and um, oh. that was my last position in Somerville. I was there, I don't know, six or seven years. I loved that work. We automated not only all of the financial systems of the city of Somerville, but the water department, everything. Yeah. We brought the records up to date. We were able to go to New York, um, present to Moody's and S&P and get a rating. It was a lot of work. I, I raised over it. So I had the government bug in the commitment to good quality, accountability, efficient, and effective mm -hmm. services. I loved Somerville, and Somerville's always been good to me. Right. Um, so um, I got recruited to the Dukakis administration. I first served at um, the de uh, Department of Employment and Training. So again, a safety net. Okay, yeah, um, there you go, there you go. Employment yeah. and training, mm -hmm. and then worked in housing for a number of years with Amy Anthony, whose son lives here in Somerville and mm -hmm. his wonderful family. Um, but Dukakis was one I, I loved and stay friendly with Michael and Kitty Dukakis. Um, but he was one of the last leaders in the state that invested heavily in affordable housing. There were all kinds of programs. Well, can you give me a few? What, yeah. was, he, what was he doing back then? I mean, because, I mean, can we bring some of them back or is it just too late? Well, um, we can. Um, you know, back then it was everything. It was preserving um, some of the public housing units. The mm -hmm. state actually put more money in. And I always think of um, housing developments, public housing developments, or expiring use projects that Cobble Hill was in Clarendon. It's like your house. You can't once invest in it and improve it and never do it again. And that's sometimes what we do in public service. In fact, we see some of the problems in the T. You know, with the maintenance, you, oh, yeah. you know, that's... 20, 30 years go by and you don't improve upon it. So there was more investment in affordable housing. And don't forget, during all the um, Republican presidents, the state, the, the, excuse me, the federal government got out of the housing business. And after Michael Dukakis, in my mind, the state got out of the housing business. Mm -hmm. So resources, bond bills that were available for more creating and preservation of affordable housing dried up. Um, innovation that Amy Anthony, my boss and mentor, because mentors mm -hmm. make such a huge difference in your life. Um, there were um, the expiring use projects. Um, there were more vouchers. And Ed, this will give you an idea of how much things change. When I worked for Michael Dukakis, the most affordable place in the greater Boston area was the South End. And yeah. we see how things have changed. Oh. And Somerville was affordable, not so much anymore. It was, and it's not anymore. Yeah. It's been unaffordable for 20 years now. Yeah. Really amazing. Um, 
So 20% inclusion rezoning is something that the city currently has, right? Mm -hmm. And I guess that, that has to do with, um, you know, if you're, if you're building 10 units, 20% 20 of it has to be at least, you know, affordable, yeah. right? Now, I, I'm, we, we have a member who has been, had the ability to take advantage of that, uh, which is really nice, has a family and all of that, yeah. so I'm really excited about that, which is great. Um, but, you know, m my friends, my coworkers, I've got family that live right over the hill here in, on Adrian Street. My mom's down there um, three, in a three family still. Um, it's just, you know, like that, that term, the rent is too damn high, yeah. right? And we need to get out of this somehow, or we need to kind of stop the bleeding. And um, what, tell me what you think is needed in the city of Somerville. What could we, where could we start? I know there's things that our current mayor is doing right now. Yes. Uh, I do know that. Yeah. Um, but I think from your perspective, I, I, and I'm sure that Katjana has put her, everything she has out there, and she's told people what she's gonna be doing. But what is it that you, that you would, would like, to, like to see? Because um, I, I know you're always, always, you're always concerned about people. I know that. <laughs> I mean, you really are. And yeah. I feel the same way. Yeah. Um, and there are some new programs because we're fortunate enough, enough to have more resources with the ARPA funds, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But the reality is it becomes really hard to make up for 20, 30 years of not investing in housing. And back then, housing, in fact, Dukakis had a cabinet secretary, and now Maura Healy's doing that again because it, it underscores the importance of affordable housing. Mm -hmm. If people don't have a roof over their head, they can't deal with other issues in their lives, obviously. Yeah. I, um, we talked about three families. I, yeah. I, one of the programs I always um, think about that we are, are an opportunity that we should take more advantage of, as you know, when families live in two and three family homes, they care more about the tenant, not about the amount of um, rent that they're mm -hmm. getting. They mm -hmm. want it to be affordable. They want a good tenant. They want to do their share. That's the way it always worked in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I think a small thing, because you have to do a lot of things when you're this far behind, is reward those property owners. Be because for them, it becomes harder to invest in your property and maintain, like we talked about public housing, you need investment always, but do something for those um, um, people that own maybe one house, maybe two houses, so like that my, are making so rent affordable. Right, like so your, example, your, like, like my mom, right? Yes. So she's got, if you have a three family and you, I think all people really want, they want to have good tenants and have a good relationship, and as a family, yes. what they call a three family, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. when I moved, when I was in, in Somerville here in that, in that same house, I had my grandmother on one floor. Yeah. I had my mom on. We lived with my mother, yeah. and I had you know my great grandmother yeah. on the first floor. So that's really what it was all about back then. When I know we're never going to be able to bring that back, but I think what you're saying is that, and if I'm wrong, let me know. But but now some people would rather you know maybe charge a little less money to get good tenants. And, and is there a way? And is there anything to give? It. But is there anything to give back to the the property owners who live in who live in their three family? Like some kind of a break. Yeah, that I can think get you a, could explore e abatements or grant programs for improvements in the house. Mm -hmm. You could also look at because some people decide not even to rent out a unit if they live in a two-family yep. because they're just afraid of mm -hmm. um, being a property owner. I think there could be more education and training on that, and more um, assistance, supportive services, so that those units come back on the market and make that available. C creation of affordable housing, which is so needed, and so much more money is needed to put into the creation and to have more home ownership programs to build wealth. But at least on the short term, get the low-hanging fruit up and going. Mm -hmm. um, so those, those are just what a about, couple of what ideas. About, I, I know I've, someone said this to me before. It might have been Marion Houston years ago. But someone was looking for an over 55 community yeah. uh, in the city of Somerville or something like that for people, you know, yeah. not someplace, you know, but, you know, a nice... Well, other communities have done them very successfully. Plymouth, for one. Mm -hmm. um, but Somerville is so expensive to build in yeah. right now. And my gosh, if we're going to talk about health and about services, older adults have so many challenges. And shame on us as a society that that's the best that we can do after mm -hmm. someone has contributed so much in their lives. 
Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, I you, we see it. We see a lot of it, and people living in. Like I think we talked about, you know, some people maybe living in a basement, or yeah. you know, it's so it's not a good place for them to be. You know, it has to be a healthy environment. Yeah, exactly. You really need exactly. a roof over their head, but you don't want them to end up with a chronic condition. No. because the yeah. So let me move into. This is a tagline that drives me crazy. Okay. Right, um, some is a great place to live, work, and play. Right. Um, or some of these a way to live, work, and play. I, I love some of just like you do, but I don't, and I work here, mm -hmm. right? 30 years, DPW. Um, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I don't feel the vibe. Um, it can be, a, it can be, but it's a huge challenge. Um, I mean, I've got almost, well, not almost, but half of our members don't live in the city, okay. and they can't afford to be yeah. here, okay? Um, so, so the affordability doesn't just hit people that on um, a low income. Now Somerville's eliminating the middle class. I'm with you on that one. I was going to. I was going to. afford. Yeah, you're right. So, yeah, so, and so workforce, especially the um, folks that are the teachers in our city, um, mm -hmm. firefighters yep. in our city, the yep. municipal workers yep. at the public works, because yep. we all want clean streets and we all don't want those potholes. Yep. But um, people have been priced out of the market. If they didn't buy, I was. I was lucky. I bought my house when I was young, and I'll tell you why. My mother was a single mother, mm -hmm. and her family didn't want her to buy a house. They were so worried that she wouldn't be able to afford to buy a house that we lived in one of my grand my grandmother's three family apartment mm -hmm. had really affordable rent. But my mother always knew that buying would be more advantageous. So, um, and she did when she was in her 60s. I had to co-sign for her because, you know, the banks want to make Very sure smart. you're going to work for 30 years and mm -hmm. pay a mortgage. Mm -hmm. But we need more um, home ownership opportunities for workforce housing. Um, so that's another really important. And if we ever want to um, begin to respond to fairness, um, related to redlining, uh, diversity, inclusion, oh, yeah. et cetera. Yeah, we that's need a big to deal. do yeah. so much more Rac on yeah, own yeah, ownership. Racial equality. It was I really agree. exciting um, yeah. hearing about Cambridge's RISE program where, now again, this goes back to really low income, single women um, with kids that they'll be getting a 500, I think only 2,000 families involved, but mm -hmm. $500 a month unattached. Now, some people, and because I remember when we talked about that related to instead of having um, a food, food markets, I started a free one in Revere with many of my colleagues mm -hmm. at Cambridge Health and Alliance. You, and you, you're coming on the board for food for free. I just yeah, want to, I I I to put Thanks. that. I'm doing the walk for hunger for them on <laughs> Sunday. I, 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 I love it. I had, to, I had to put that in. I'm sorry. I just. No, thank you. <laughs> thank you, because they're here now in Somerville. They're just I know. by I, Tom we, Ben's place. We interviewed them. The they were here. They were good, great. Good, good, good. <laughs> yes. Yes, it it's fun. a great organization. Yeah, they were great. It does really great work. Let, let me ask, oh, I, finish with no. that, though. Yeah. I, I don't remember All right, what okay. I thought now. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, um, so what, what I want to say is um, middle class, yeah. right? Now, if you look at the census in the city of Somerville, That's right? So For me, it's all over the map because I'm, I get confused when I look at it sometimes. But one thing that's very clear to me is that people are making a lot of money yeah. to live here. Yep. Right, six figures, two hundred, two hundred and fifty thousand, yep. and up, whatever. That's that's a in my world, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Now, for for people like me, or if there's a younger couple that wants to live in the city, and let's say they make eighty thousand, yeah, you know, ninety. But but what I'm saying is that why can't a program, you know, in the city be created for that? Because I think the cap is so it's too low. Yeah. I mean. It, the make bottom 40, line is grand. there needs to be more resources, and that's why there are well, things I'm, like transfer taxes, taxes, linkage fees, et cetera. Right. Um, that's why sometimes there's tension in creating affordable housing, and I'm going to tell you this as a union member because I remember advocating always for um, uh, uh, North Street, the Clarendon, Clarendon Hill oh, section, yeah, and a, all that renovation. That was a big deal. Um, yes, and people wanted the market rates to have union um Workers, right. but yes. not the affordable because they can't make the margins. It was a prevailing more wage. More money is yeah. needed to do more affordable housing. And I believe there was a prevailing wage issue that went along yes. with that too. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't have. To, if it wasn't going to be unions, they want a prevailing we, wage. Absolutely. To be paid. Right, yes. right. So that's yeah. what they were looking for. Yeah. Just some fairness, you know. That's yeah. that's, that's, yeah. that's what they were looking see, at. But see, that's why sometimes 
people doing great work end up um, being pitted against one another when in fact they're, they're not the issue and what they are advocating for isn't. It's that we haven't put sufficient resources in. Um, and I would further say related to affordable housing, a lot of the housing, the market rate and even affordable, uh, smaller units, one, two bedroom, we need some three and four bedroom houses for families too. Um, yeah. Yeah, and that's not? not being created quite as well, much. Well, was it a Generation Z? I was reading the Globe about um, they're moving. Peop they're moving in. People are moving in together so they can survive. Yeah. It's just becoming. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, when I worked for Jean Bruin at the Council on Aging, I started a program called Share a Home, really? and my idea was I know I was in I my twenties, and I thought yes, Share a Home. I thought it was great. It was for um, um, elders or anyone who uh, lived alone in a really big house and had many rooms and it was becoming unaffordable, would they want a roommate? Like a Someone bed and older? breakfast kind of thing, but well, not no, quite. Well, no, they were really like roommates, oh, kind okay. of, or, you know, someone who may have needed some help with laundry or other things. So it was matching people where they were and what their needs were. Did it get off were. the ground at all? Or? Um, well, I told you I only stayed one year at Council on Aging. You know, it's being talked about again, and it has been in the past few years. Oh, um, it still is something wow. really innovative. But I, I want to give the city of Somerville a plug. We do a lot in affordable housing. The problem is we're not um, gaining ground that we need. Um, Too many years have gone need. by. Too many years, it wasn't our fault, as I said, at the federal level, at the state level, and now catch up. That's why mm. we have to also preserve and protect besides create, because that pipe long takes It's like this so everywhere. Long. I mean, New York is, I think I saw a story about New York, and people are running to, running to Florida, running, they're just vacating and just getting out of certain areas. Well, you I've know? been reading some of um, um, uh, Senator Jalen's, Pat Jalen's articles mm -hmm. about some of the debates about, you know, should some of the... Um, uh, surplus in Massachusetts go um, back to um, the folks at what level mm -hmm. and you know p people who uh, say a lot of uh, wealthier um, residents of the city are leaving um, I, of the state leaving and I'm not sure all of that data is borne out um, so um, I'm you know, when you have a chance for equity for to, to start addressing more fairness more equity more you know, um, well, it's pretty housing, deep, though. It's pretty deep, yeah. Laura Haley. This this millionaires tax thing that occurred that is definitely going to be changing people's minds and those who have money, whether they want what they're doing, and they may they may be fleeing as well. That might be a lot of what's going on now. I know? think it's less than than um, Massachusetts is a great state to live in. It's mm -hmm. expensive, but a lot of places are. Do you want to move and live in Florida? Do you <laughs> I don't. I, I don't no, know. I don't. It depends on where no. I would go. I wouldn't well, live but, there. But we're talking community. And some of the issues yeah. in the uh, state of Florida, and whether it's um, books in the libraries. I mean, this this no, craziness it, going it, it's on. Definitely, it's definitely different. So let me get. Let me. One thing I want to get back to. Um, yes, sorry. I want to talk a little bit about an issue that's a hot button issue. It's been going on for a long time, and it, it, look at Cambridge had rent control. Rent controllers in a lot of different places, and now it's cropping up again. Yeah. We're beginning to hear it all over again, okay? The question I'm going to ask you here, it's, it's a broad question, mm -hmm. but you can answer it the way you would normally want to. Is some form of rent control um, needed? Some type of rent control, or is it just too drastic to even think about? It's the word rent control is just a That's why I like issue. to say rent, rent stabilization. Yeah, right. Because it's about stabilizing so that people will have places to live. Mm -hmm. I think Michelle Wu has done a, a, a pretty good job um, juggling um, the needs because we know it, whether it's affordable housing creators or just market housing, if you do something so drastic that it shuts off that market, those funds are necessary to support mm -hmm. the affordable housing. So I think she found some balance, but I do think we need some rent stabilization. It was an issue um, on, on, on the campaign trail, of course. And what I always said about it is that, because I had been in town advocating for lots of whether it was linkage, I was always advocating. I worked on the CPA so that we could have more money for affordable housing, and that gave us a big boom. But um, you, you, you need to find 
you've got to get the support from the state legislature, and, and that's what I always said when I talked about it. Now, Maura Healy has talked about, um, you know, usually it has to be the entire state house has to vote in mm -hmm. support of it, and that's not going to happen, and we knew that didn't yeah. happen in the past and wouldn't. But if you do it city um, by city and by town, it is possible in that there are communities poised and ready. Um, Somerville's always worked. I think Ben Ewing Campen just about a week ago started talking about what that well, if that's something, look like. So that's something for the city council and the mayor to, to have a Yeah, to have and, a discussion and about. with Mara Healy continuing to be supportive, I think some communities are going to need some stabilization to or they're going to end with it. Somerville could end up just you you talked about this six figure uh, salary earners, but yet the kids at the high school, they, they still have roots in the city, mm -hmm. and they aren't rich. Um, no, I, the summer that we love includes everybody, and we don't it, want that it's to hard. go it's, away, yeah, it's so real, you it, have you know, to take some initiative. That's a hard question that I asked you, yeah. in my opinion, because but it's I just so... And I think right. we do need something. What about we the also, Affordable Housing Trust Fund 1990? Yeah. What about yeah, that? Talk yeah. about that. Uh, Gene Brune um, uh, uh, established that, but I think it passed under Capuano because it was just as Gene was leaving. It was started mm -hmm. in 89 and I think passed in 90. I asked to be on um, the Affordable Housing Trust Fund um, because, you know, that was a common theme. I, I knew we were poor growing up with a single mother. I knew that we were able to live in good housing mm -hmm. because my grandmother owned a house and she would keep our rents affordable. So I always knew the importance of um, having affordable housing. So I have served on that since its inception. So what's that, 33 years, 33 years wow. now. I will say the other thing I want to talk about when we talk about housing is the unhoused population in East Somerville has grown a lot. And that's another area that we have to address and do more. Mm -hmm. um, we need to have a warming center. We need to have more shelter space in the community. The numbers are up. East Somerville, lots of time, those of us who grew up there feel like it takes longer to address the is issue. This, and actually on has done excellent work in East Somerville. Is this because of the pandemic too? Is, it, is that just like, you know? I think the pandemic um, had some awful consequences yeah. for people losing their job. And, you know, mental we'll talk health. about unions at some point. Yeah. Mental health. This is Mental Health Month. Yeah. Um, and uh, Surgeon General keeps talking about loneliness, too, being one of the factors that interfere with people's well-being mm -hmm. and mental health. But, yes, I think for sure. But I don't think necessarily because sometimes there's comorbidities with people, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're um, unhoused. They might have mental health issues. They might have a substance use issue. And so all kinds of wraparound and supportive services are necessary, but people can't be out on the streets. No, um, I mean, that's, it's, it's really, right it's difficult. It's, yeah, it's really difficult to see it too. And I mean, I saw, I was in Davis Square working today and I seen a young lady who was talking to someone who looked like they needed help. And, she, and yeah. you know, there's people stop by and they, yeah. they say hello and you know, I mean, I have a personal, I know what that's like because my dad became homeless you know, um, later on in life, and it was just—it was just a terrible thing that happened that way, and yeah. it's difficult to deal with. And um, he got—I think he got the help that he needed, um, and there were really good people out there. He was a wonderful, wonderful. He was a wonderful person, great guy, um, and just yes, yeah, sometimes you know, it, it, uh, if you work in a factory your entire life, yeah. right? It, it, these things can happen. Yeah. And you, it, absolutely. Yeah, it's you not like. Job. Some yeah. people, paycheck to paycheck, yeah. people make choices about not getting their medication because they don't have enough money. Or when we were doing, I still volunteer at Cambridge Health Alliance a lot. I'm on their foundation, but I also do the vaccines besides the mm -hmm. free produce money. When we would give out those gift cards, whether it was $25 or $75, whole families would come and say, we didn't know how we were going to eat this month. Unbelievable. Getting these, yes. Yeah, it's really hard. To, that's stuff. hard. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's heartbreaking to hear that. Let me ask you a question, um, because we're, we're getting a little towards the end here. Yes. Um, how did the pa how, pandemic affected everybody in so many different ways, right? Um, I always like to ask a guest about the pandemic. Now, we're, we're timeline now, we're three years yeah. after the pandemic um, began in March of 2019. 19, right? yeah. Yes. Amazing. Um, so here we are. And um, how did it affect you personally, and what were some of the things that 
I was working at Cambridge Health Alliance at the time, and I was working seven days a week, walking into the office um, in frantic about the fact that there wasn't protective equipment, personal protective mm. equipment. We started with all the wonderful Somerville natives, a um, mask making um, so that we could I protect recall that. workers. We could protect uh, Linda Cornell from um, uh, the, uh, the VNAs. She had no PPE, so we started having all families making masks. We were picking up, collecting them, distributing them. There was a lady on your, uh, in, uh, up, up in front. Renee Pro Scott was a bit yeah. organizing. There was a, a whole, yeah, I yeah, remember that. Yeah, there was that. a whole group of people, and I would bring all of those masks, distribute them. We were distributing food seven days a week. On the weekends, I would mm. do rounds at the hospital to visit both the people that um, had COVID, but also our staff who weren't sure what was going to happen. They, we, yes. we set up um, facilities at Tufts so people could sleep there because you didn't want to bring infection. So that was how it affected me. That's what made me run for uh, mayor. Really? It was that public health vision and worked. I worked regionally and still do a lot and we have to whether it's housing or anything. It, we live in a regional world. We cross borders and boundaries yeah. all the time and we have to work together to solve problems. The one upside is much more awareness by everyone about inequities, unfairness. Mm. Um, and I think that's the way, like Food for Free, their fundraising numbers were up. A lot of entities that worked to make certain people were safe, they had food, et cetera. More people understood inequities and realized they needed to do mm. something more. And people gave. People gave. People gave, and yeah. they really did, and yes. I felt even when I would go and get something, you know, a curbside pickup, whatever, try to give more, do more, and help people who needed it, you know, Especially you just felt that way. Especially the workers, and you know, the healthcare workers, we got a lot of recognition. But those kids at Market Basket, mm. people, Sarah, who I just know. closed 789, which she was giving us cheesecakes, but you know, I couldn't tip enough and we have to continue to give great tips to yeah. people that work in service areas well, we have or get of, them unionized. Just to let you know, we have a lot of municipal yeah. employees. I'm glad you said this. There's a lot of municipal employees as well that rolled right through this pandemic and you know, kudos to them. Amazing work. Um, and you know what? We, we, we like to, we, look, we have a job to do and we do it. Money's always secondary, but I want to talk a little bit about a union town I want to talk about Somerville because it's a, it was a blue collar yeah, yeah. town, um, factory workers, you know, seamstress, whatever. Yeah. There were so many different, I mean, I remember so much of it. Um, and municipal unions, and now we have coffee shops being yeah. organized, right, as unions. So we've got the Forge. Um, oh, Jen and... Uh, block, block 11, right, we've got Jen that. And Tucker, they were in... Yeah, the, and the Diesel, yeah, we got the Diesel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Diesel Cafe in Davis Square. All With their I, support and yeah, advocacy. Right, so I think they're all owned by the same people yes, as well. Yes, the, 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 the very Block, Diesel, and Forge are all owned by Jen and, uh, Parker and Tucker Lewis. Okay, so so yeah. the, exactly, and they're in this magazine, yeah, right? Yeah, they're in that they're one, in, yeah. They're in the Scout, great. So here, here are people who want to see unions, mm -hmm. right? They want people to be unionized. They want them to have just cause. They want them to have rights, and they want them to have a competitive pay. It's, isn't that a wonderful live. thing? It's yeah. just a wonderful thing when you think yeah. about it. So yeah. now we've got Starbucks workers up here um, that, who are looking to be unionized. Yes. Um, and I don't know if they had their vote or they're going to have a vote, but they had something called a sip-in, yes. where people yeah. went out and they hung out and they yeah. you know, held signs and all of that. Please allow these people to unionize. I interviewed a, yeah. a, a Starbucks uh, gentleman here, great guy. Um, he's working really hard to get this done. Yeah. Um, so we're hoping. You know how hard it is for people on their salaries to afford their rent mm. and food. Yeah. It needs yeah. and, and the other need better benefits. They need better wages, fairer wages. And it deals with diversity and inclusion because it's a broader, it's younger people starting out. Um, multicultural backgrounds and all else. We, yeah, I, we, and, and, the, and the, we have a crisis in the city right now where it's really difficult for people to hire, right? So Starbucks is paying a little bit more money, um, which is great. I mean, of course, tipping's always a big part of it, right? Yeah. Um, even the people who I represent in the Sunville Municipal Employees Association, we 
you know, and this is not, I'm not appealing to anybody about anything here. That's not what I'm trying to do. Um, but what's important is that we need now, after this pandemic, to be brought, you know, up to where yeah. a level where we can, you know, afford, affordability for us, you know. It's happening all over the place now. Well, so. the pandemic really made me understand clearer. Um, because you mentioned all my family have been in unions. Mm -hmm. I was management from when I started out with yep. Jean Broom. But the importance of even having the benefits, the health benefit, some sick time, some vacation time, it's great. It's and sufficient great. resources to be able to provide for their family. Well, that's what brought that's what brought me. My son was just a baby, you know. That's what brought me in because I'm like I need health insurance, and I, yeah, I'm not going to make a lot of money. I'm fine with that. You know, I just want to be able to take care of my wife and my son, you know. You take pride in your work. Oh, absolutely, of course. You know, uh, well, I came, when I first started for the city, I was a, uh, I was a pretty good trash man, <laughs> right? I threw, I, you know, we trash and recycling, we did all of that. Uh, and, you know, 30 years later, you know, I'm still working out there on the street and doing the best I can. But uh, helping many others, of my too, to make certain things are fair and equitable. So Absolutely. Congratulations. Uh, yeah. Continue um, to care enough. Yeah. I, well, that's what it's all about, in my yeah. opinion. Um, so unions, they're usually met with resistance when they try to organize. But usually, I don't know why that happened. I guess it's, if somebody were to come in your place of business and say, listen, um, we're going to tell you how to run your business with afraid. with employees. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Uh, because if they don't if they're not treated properly, then we're going to file yeah. a grievance or whatever. And people take you know, they they just they don't they don't really like it. So I'm going to tell you here's what what unions do. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, they balance employer market power. Um, they raise wages for all workers. Um, they promote equal pay for all workers. They help shrink racial and gender wage gaps. And, and, and that's, this is a list of, that we're running through here. To help improve benefits and scheduling, create safer workplaces, and well, we certainly like do. What's wrong with that, right? Um, and, you know, reduce economic inequality. And the challenges some of the workers are facing who do not have a union, uh, little or no pension or, or retirement, and adequate health care. We yeah. talked about that, right? No voice in decisions about scheduling, promotions, discipline, et cetera. Discrimination, favoritism. Harassment, health, safety, aggressive management interference. So that's the list. Those are all critical yeah. to someone's well-being, to being able to afford uh, life. And retirement and no retirement benefits to me is one of the scariest things ever. And then this constant threat it's very of scary. Medicare, it's very scary. will it last, will it not last? Yep. It's essential. Um, I mean, people thinking about retiring, I don't think that that's even like realistic. In, in the way things are for people. I just don't think it's realistic. I think, it, yeah, you can retire if you want to get away from your, your current situation, you know, and, but you, you, you're probably going to have to work. You're going to have to balance it out somewhere. That's, that's yeah. the way it's going to be. Um, so you spend a lot of time in the city, right? Mm -hmm. and you, you, you ran yeah. for mayor a couple of years ago, which is, you know, it's, it's a daunting task for anybody, and, and I think you've, you've, you've experienced that. Tell me, it doesn't have to be a long list, just a couple of things. So what, what are some of the major issues that you believe must be addressed in the city of Summer? We talked about affordable housing. Is there anything else that you're looking at that you, that are, that's concerning to you? Well, part of the affordability of housing are uh, dealing with unhoused. That needs to happen Almost. right away. We need to have more shelters. We need to have more places. And, you know, we have a land trust um, now. What properties the city own or uh, businesses own that have been vacant? That you, you need to fast to be able to re respond mm -hmm. to these problems. I can't believe that in this, this country, and this isn't a city issue, that anybody no. should ever go hungry. Yeah. So it's wonderful that the lunches, free lunches, are back on the table. But that worries me. That's why I'm on the food for free board. And again, yeah. I'll say all the safety nets are employment and training, mentoring people. Huge. 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 Uh, huge. Yeah. Employment and training, you know, it's, 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 we don't have a lot of time left, unfortunately, I apologize. But thinking about, back. but thinking about, um, you know, training and employment and apprenticeships, right? Um, it's a great concept. It's done in yeah. many different places, right? Um, but it's got to be done right. Yeah. And you've got to find a place for mom or dad who are going to be taking on one of that new job, yeah. right? And they have children, and where are they Through going? The child where, where, yeah, we got to take care. That's huge, right? They talked about that during the pandemic. Childcare, how are we going to deal with that? Yeah. And 
you know, we, so we want to be able to get them, we want to be able to train yeah. them, give them all the support that they need yeah. so we can bring them in. We need to do more in employment and training and career paths. We also need more businesses in this city and everywhere stepping up. I know Tom Ben's always done a lot in engineering. We take kids from the high school at Cambridge Health mm -hmm. Alliance. I still say we am on the foundation. I can say that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, growing up, I didn't have a mentor. And so I made decisions myself about school. And so I only applied to schools that were in Boston because I felt like I shouldn't ask to live someplace because I shouldn't get any money for I needed to be local and mm -hmm. live at home. Yeah. Um, having a mentor made all the difference in the world when I started my career, someone like Amy Anthony. And I realized that was probably the craziest thing. And it's better um, to... to ask for and move away. Um, but I, as a result of having mentors who really shaped, I was the first one in my family to go to college, so it was all new for me. But um, long story short, I always take the time to help anyone looking for advice with their career, looking for a new job. And what I ask them, and I've done this for all of my career, so I have hundreds of people in this network of mine, do it for someone else, pay it forward. Make certain you're available to someone. Advice, looking for a job. You just gave me an idea now. Now I, now I have to talk to you better about this, though. But <laughs> a call-in show, right, where someone can actually call in, right, and you can give them free advice on the air live. Well, that's a good well, that, that might not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, because um, people are shy about it, and a lot of people don't stop and take the time. Yeah. And I always say what goes around comes around. Right. We've all been there when we're looking for our next Next exactly. step. I want and to it's ask, rewarding for the person that does it. I want to ask another question. Yes. Um, single payer uh, yeah. health care, Medicare for all. Yeah. Um, is it realistic? Can it be done? Oh, Do you gosh, like it? Oh, gosh, it's so entrenched with business and insurance companies. But should it be done? Absolutely. Would it lead to more equity in health care? Would it lead to more people not having to decide, I think I'll only take half my diabetes medicine because I don't have enough yeah, money for yeah, it? Yeah, that's crazy. Medicare works fine that's completely with crazy. the government being the single payer. Um, it's expensive. Um, but when you take all that other, uh, all that bureau bloated bureaucracies of insurance companies, um, I, I, I think we could do it better, we could do it cheaper, we could have a healthier... This is good. I, I, yeah, well, you know, I don't... Sometimes I really get concerned with governments involved in, with, with the health care insurance and things like that. Of course, I'm with the GIC, uh, the Group Insurance Commission. I'm fine with it. Um, you know, I'm happy to have whatever I have. You know what I'm saying? But I always get concerned once government gets, you know, gets involved with it. But they it, do but, it for Medicare and they do a good job. Yeah. And, yeah, I, and I, people I aren't denied or prevented. You have an existing condition and you go to a new job and they don't want to cover you. I mean, mm. uh, and we pay so much. Yeah. So it's, ex it's expensive. We, it's expensive to retire because, you know, you have to, my, my mom, been doing it for years now, okay? It costs, it costs her a lot of money yeah. uh, to, keep, to keep what she has. So um, I want to talk just a, real quick to close out the show about maybe a little a mentoring kind of a thing because, you know, um, it's, it's grooming people. I go to these meetings, and you've gone to these meetings that we've, you know, I've, I've met you with some, some, some will stand together meetings or whatever, and I'm like, I don't see a lot of younger, younger yeah. people here. And I'm wondering why we don't see it and what type of a person does it take to have to want to get involved in your community and stay with it. Yeah. Like doing what you've, you've done for your entire life I mean, we're not asking for like 500 yeah. Mary Cassessos, right? We're not asking for yeah. that. But we are asking for people to come out and get involved yeah. in their community, even if it's a small part of what, yeah. you know. There are some young people involved in housing because it's an issue that affects them directly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we don't have the family structure with, you know, in Somerville, everybody's cousin. I mean, just on my street, a family could make up a uh, Relievio game that was huge. <laughs> I mean, you know. Yeah, it's a big family. But, yeah, um, um, so I, I think if it's, a, a, you know, lived experiences, get people more involved. Um, I think the pandemic has had such an impact um, on mental health. There's not enough services a provider. I said it's Mental Health Month. NAMI is such an incredible organization that I participate in. Acronym uh, for? 
a national association for um, um, mental. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, they have the they Got had it. a suicide line before there was a universal one. And Donna Marsh, who does things at Mass Association for Mental Health. I mean, there's some incredible organizations out there, but we haven't had enough providers. We need more providers. We also have to look at uh, providing care differently. I we've done training when I was at CHA of community health workers, a career track for people mm -hmm. that could get them in good paying jobs and health care right. and then have we need not to keep feeding we've got to do it differently do you know I feel like we've done better work I do a lot in oral health because I was at Harvard for 20 years in third world countries in providing oral health than we have in this country at right. times it's not integrated into your overall mm -hmm. care so sometimes we just need to shake it up um, and well I want I, I great points but when I go to a meeting next time, I want to see some younger okay. people show up with some fresh ideas. Let's invite. I don't, let's try to invite. Well, I don't want to see. I don't want to see a disconnect between, you know, the older generation. The yeah. I mean, I think we need to really blend in and, and get this done for racial, racial, social justice. Um, women in the workplace. That's another issue that I've always been concerned about. Pay, pay equality, homelessness. We just talked yeah. about that. Now. I'm going to close this out with one, one little quick thing here. Diane Wan, who's wonderful, has got yes. her own show, um, does, does great work. And um, she, she sent me something. But we had a Labor Spring teach-in at the library on the 26th yes. of April. Uh, at the summer, it was, you know, it was well attended, and it was community leaders, some activists there. And um, what she wrote, here's what she said. She said, it will be an upcoming, uh, on an upcoming summer labor show, which it will be, you'll be able to see it. Uh, what was, uh, the presentation was great. Discussing a clear vision to engage stakeholders in Somerville that include low income and minority residents, as well as big businesses, developers, and well-sourced members of the community to come together and find ways to maintain the Somerville that we love and ensure that it is a community that demands justice, dignified treatment, and fair living union wages for all citizens. That's right. That's right. That's but don't the forget, key. Ed, we're talking about some people have to work two and three jobs without benefits. How can they go I to don't, meetings and I don't, that's why, what they need? Yeah, so, that's, that's how yeah. I got wrapped up into yeah. doing what, I mean, I was just but like. Cass has a lot of wonderful young people, CD, um, Somerville Community Corporation. That I love the 100 Homes program. I forgot to plug it. That to me was an innovation. Okay. Buying up some of the three family, four families in Somerville. Well, it's huge and more. Yeah. Well, now somebody beat everybody else to it. Now, unfortunately, because oh, yeah. these developers, anyway. it's, it's amazing. Um, Sorry, well, I know we're trying. No, to that's that's fine. In a lot here. Yeah. It's, no, there's a it's lot. All and, important. But I want to. I want to. You know what? Is it McGraw? Tim McGraw? Yeah. It's a country. Country, country guy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He plays a lot of music. Yeah. He's wonderful. Um, and I heard it, I heard the song the other day, and I'm like, I. I don't know where I've been because I did. I've never heard it. But then I looked. I wanted to see the lyrics of it, so I picked out some of the lyrics. I'm not going to sing it. I'm just going <laughs> to read it because okay. you don't want to hear me sing. Um, so it's called um, "Humble and Kind." So I want to close the show with this because you are humble and you are a kind person, okay. and I want to thank, thank you very much for being on the show. Um, it says so when the dreams you're dreaming come to you. When the work you put in is realized, let yourself feel the pride, but always be humble and kind. Don't expect a free ride from no one. Don't hold a grudge or a chip, and here's why. Bitterness keeps you from flying. Always stay humble and kind. Don't take for granted the love this life gives you when you get where you are going. And don't forget to turn back around and help the next one in line always be humble and kind. Beautiful. Yeah, it is, it's a beautiful yeah. song. And I, I heard it and I said, I have to, you know, I have to bring this and, yeah. and do it. I think you'll find those 40 people, you included, and some we mentioned, all interesting to interview. Because I think that. You know, I, I, I never thought of doing that. but I'd, I I'd get every one, yeah, last I, one of them. I pulled this magazine out. It's wonderful. Um, yeah, it's, it's older. It's 2016. But you know, these were real. These people really were giving back to the community, and um, I'm not plugging myself. You plug me, right? Yes. But I was proud to be part of it. Um, it was a little celebration at the Armory. It was, yeah, it was that. My, my, my yeah, mom, yeah. my mom was up there with me, and yeah. you know, my wife Lisa, and all that. And it was very cool. So, thank. I want to thank the city of Southfield for everything it's given me, because it has given me a lot. Um, 
God, and I'm, awesome. I'm a true summable person. I, I, you know, I love the city. Even the old and the new, just, just like you do, you know, there's a lot of challenges out there. But we're able to come here at Summer Media Center and get out all the information that, that, yeah. that, that you have stored in you. And you've got much more, I'm sure. We could, I'm, not, I'm serious about that, you know, making phone calls and calling in. So here we have a beautiful arrangement that uh, Yvette Wilkes brought us. Um, uh, and and I, I guess it, I don't know, not my honor. Um, maybe it is, but I appreciate that. Thank you very much, Yvette. And for, uh, for Mary, it looks great uh, in the background here. Um, so I want to thank everybody for um, watching the show. This is on is a YouTube show as well. Don't forget we have a YouTube channel. People forget that. I also had a gentleman one day who was yell screaming at me from the third floor. I think I was picking up trash or doing something. He says, when's the, when's the next show? I'm like, you don't even know who I am. Nice. I was so cool. It was, so, it was great. So we, we're glad that watch. people watch. I know we don't have these shows frequently as we want to, um, but they, it takes a lot to put them together. It really does. Um, and I'm getting tired. Uh, I'm joking. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I think boundless energy. And I I think Somerville Media Center is such it's a an great, important resource. It's a great place. It's a great place. Somerville Media Center. Yeah, and this, this building that we're in Union Square, um, at some point, I, unfortunately, we will be relocating uh, to another place. Um, love this place. Love the building. Luna Square is beautiful. The background, everything that's going on. Even with all the construction, all the shows. I started doing a show four, year, four or five years ago, and the construction is still going on. So it's not going to stop. So thank you to Greg Hill, our assistant producer. I want to thank you, Brett Wilkes, um, for helping us um, get back on track here. And of course, Mary Cassesso. Um, just full of great information, and you, you can't get this anywhere, only here. So uh, I just want to say, in unity of strength, thank you. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. It was fun. It was fun. You did a great job. Oh, thanks. The, the thanks passion so always, always comes through. It always does. Well, you, you, you're able to pull it right out of